Hey, thanks everybody for uh, coming to our talk today about uh, debugging CNI. Uh, it's something that uh, touches all of us when we're Kubernetes users and we wanted to share with you our experience. Uh, my name is Doug Smith and I'm the technical lead for the OpenShift network plumbing team. Uh, we deal with kind of all things CNI as well as multi-networking with multi-CNI and I'm a member of a network plumbing working group. Um, and I'm joined with Daniel here today. So hi, all around. So I'm um, also being part of the OpenShift CN networking team and I've been um, basically the project team lead for the project regarding CNN plugins, which is called Query Kubernetes. So basically I deal with a lot of networking and stuff during Red Hat as well with that. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is first a brief introduction to CNI to help uh, let you know kind of where things live and what the touch points are and kind of a flow of uh, what CNI does. We're going to look at some of the basics for CNI um, debugging and then Daniel's going to uh, give us an overview of CNI tool and come into a demo to show you exactly how he tackles um, debugging. Um, we're also going to then kind of feed this information back into what we think uh, needs to happen for CNI 2.0 and how we can as a community make this better as uh, we come together. So CNI, it's the container networking interface. It, what CNI is, is an API. And each of uh, the CNI plugins are discrete binaries that live on disk that you'll see here by the CNI binary directory. That's something you, you gotta know where it is. Um, and you also have CNI configurations that feed into those. Those are executed by your container uh, runtime implementation. So depending on your distribution of Kubernetes, you'll have either a container D or a cryo that's going to fire off um, CNI. And both, there's a commonality between both of those, which is libcni, which is provided by the CNI maintainers. Um, so between your container runtime implementation, the kubelet, and your CNI plugins themselves, um, those plugins will then go and manipulate your pod sandbox. So that's where you're going to have a network namespace and that's where your CNI plugin is going to do its primary work of creating the network interfaces that you see in your pods. When you've got a CNI plugin call, it's really kind of a simple flow. What happens is your um, runtime implementation using libcni is going to call a binary that's on the host. And it's going to call it with some environment variables that give you some information about the call that's being made. And then it's going to feed in a configuration through standard in. Your plugin itself then will speak via standard out and it'll give a CNI result as specified by the CNI spec. And then additionally, it'll have an exit code which counts. So if you don't exit zero, that pod's gonna go off into a crash loop and try again. Yeah, so as that was mentioned in here, like in the CNN specification, we got to, to implement basically four different, different, four different calls. So we got CNI add, del, check, and version. Even though this is um, somehow mandatory from this specification, you don't really, most of the plugins, they don't implement check. So as the name implies, add would just basically add a container for a network or apply uh, modifications on your plugin. Delete would remove a container for the network. Um, what of advice? Uh, the Dell operation should return zero, uh, or you may get into a terrible, terrible crash loop backoff that we will speak about later. And also, the delete operation may not be successful should some operations in the node be happening, such as a rebooting. So then you would need to delete uh, basically the, the remaining things on your own. Then you got check, check. As I said, it's not really implemented. I mean, I'm going to be showing an example about a CNI plugin that we developed for, specifically for KubeCon, which is called KubeCon CNI, and that does automatically nothing. But uh, I think it's a good example to see how the you know, CNI plugin could be bootstrapped. And version will be just you know, getting you back to with the version name. 
from the CNI plugin. So CNI plugins get their configuration by a, a, a JSON file. Even though there's a lot of fields in this JSON file, what you should just be you know, keeping up with is that you don't really need to have all these fields. Uh, I'll be showing that now, as of now, but the CNI um, mandatory fields are just version, name, and type. Besides that, you can add whatever fields you may like to use in your own implementation, and then IPAM and DNS ones. Uh, IPAM is a little special. We'll speak about that later for, for now. Let's take a quick look about the KubeCon CNI plugin. So uh, I hope that this is big enough. Let's make it a little bit bigger just in case. So how do I really make a CNI plugin? As I was saying, this does nothing, but as you can basically figure it out, we are implementing the scale from the plugin, and we got the four methods there. We got add, del, the version, and as I was commenting, we don't, are not going to really be really implementing check at all in this case. But uh, if you just go and check the, CM, the add version, you see that it's basically loading the Netcon data from there. Uh, it's going to be getting you an error should that happen. And we are just basically returning a JSON. So nothing really fancy. I'm mentioning this because developing a CNN plugin is not a straightforward, even if this is just so easy, because there's seldom to know documentation and how to do this. So most of the people just read the spec but there is no a real example. This is something that at some point should improve. You're happy to you know, fill any pull request. Uh, just something to mention quick uh, about this plugin that Daniel is showing is uh, we've got um, uh, this code available on GitHub. We've got a link later in the presentation. But this is what I would call a dummy CNI plugin. And it's something that you could take just as a skeletal structure and put in some logging and use it to substitute in for a currently running CNI plugin if you wanted to get some debug data as well. Um, carry on. Uh, and one other CNI configuration, just to go over briefly, is what we call a conf list, otherwise known as uh, chained CNI plugins. This is where instead of having the type field, you're going to have this plugins uh, array. And uh, uh, I wanted to show this specifically because in the CNI 1.0 spec, it will be all configuration lists, all conf lists. So you're always going to see this uh, list, even if it's a list of one in the future. So just to give you a quick example of that. All right, so let's um, just get into some of the basics. One of the first things that you're going to want to do when you dig in and start debugging CNI is to figure out where are your confter and your binder? Um, this is the binder is where your CNI plugins exist themselves. So those are the binaries that are on disk. And as well as your confter, which is going to have your primary CNI uh, configuration. There's some defaults, and most of the time you're going to find these in the default directories. However, they're configurable. And since the kubelet is going to be in charge of kicking off this process, that's where you're going to find uh, the configuration for these. So two places that you want to look. You want to look at your uh, uh, kubelet's command line arguments. So just do a PS, look for that, see how it's actually running. If it's not specified there, don't assume it's the, fault, the defaults. What you're going to want to do is actually pull up the kubelet configuration. So uh, if you're using, if your distribution happens to use a non-default location, you can really burn some cycles trying to look in just the wrong place. Something that uh, you've got to realize related to your uh, 
Binder is that the type field itself, where you've got, you know, flannel, calico, psyllium, whatever it may happen to be, that's actually referring to a binary in your um, Binder path itself. So that's what it's actually going to execute. So be mindful of the fact that that has to be an actual file that lives on disk and that matches the value that's there. Uh, something that I've seen happen many a time is that you're having a failure and it's because you've specified uh, this configuration, yet your CNI plugin itself hasn't installed properly or isn't installed on disk. So that's one thing to take a look for. And related to your configuration directory, this is going to... Um, the CNI configuration that's alphabetically first there is the presence of that file is going to determine if your node is marked ready. So if you do a kubectl get nodes, you'll see a status field ready or not ready. And that CNI configuration is a semaphore for the kubelet to know that this node is ready to um, handle network traffic. So as a CNI developer, you want to be mindful of how you lay down your CNI configuration on disk. And as an administrator, you want to be mindful of how this process works so that you can know if your nodes are tainted properly or not um, in order to accept these pods. So you can, of course, set up um, pods that you may want to have run very early in your cluster lifecycle to tolerate um, the not ready state. Um, however, if you're seeing that you're in a not ready state, your pods aren't getting scheduled, um, go ahead and take a look in your confter to make sure that that CNI configuration isn't there. And if it's not there, you'll pro it's probably specific to um, your primary CNI that you would use for um, no pod to pod traffic. So for example, if it's flannel, that's installed with a daemon set. So check out what's going on with that daemon set and then enter your node to check out what's up. A few more just quick tips for debugging. Uh, the number one thing that will bite me is JSON. So it's great for parsing. It's not so great for humans. So whenever you're mucking around with your CNI configs in JSON, just send them through a linter all the time. Um, so JQ is the one we use all the time or just uh, if you don't have it on your system, just cat it out and grab a JSON linter on the web. Um, in terms of logging, uh, this can be tricky and very um, CNI plugin specific. Since these plugins speak uh, standard in, standard out, that standard out from your plugin, if it exits non zero, that is going to be captured by the kubelet itself. So that's a primary place that you want to look for any CNI specific errors. And then depending on the specific CNI plugging it is, the developers may have implemented the logging in a specific way. So check the docs to see if there's any sort of uh, parameters that could potentially enhance logging. And um, it's also possible that in some cases you'll have CNI plugins that have a daemon component that's running in a pod. So as I mentioned, we've got these binaries that run on, that are on the host and are on disk. And then we have some that are, that could potentially be running as a daemon in a pod. So check both on the host and in the pods. And if you're a developer, please add some additional logging for your administrators. Um, this is, um, they can be particularly tricky to debug. Um, last but not least, when you're debugging CNI, you're often doing it specific node to node, and you'll be on one particular node, and if you're making manipulations to that node, you'll find yourself having to muck around with 
labels, node selectors, all of that kind of stuff. You may want to just use uh, static pods, which allow you to put a YAML file specifying your pod uh, on that particular node, and then it'll spin up on that node. So it's a handy way to uh, kind of get around that. Yeah, so I also wanted to speak a little bit about CNA tool, which is a tool that comes within the repo of the CNI itself. Because, so recapping, so how do we get the CNI plugins to work? So you can, a CNI plugin, it's a, it's a binary, which may get installed into all the nodes from the cluster using a daemon set of whatever. Then you may need to go see what happens when you are going to, you know, go and develop the binary. How do you copy that? Then also you will need to check the logins. Maybe uh, as this is executed by the kubelet. You may want to go to the kubelet or cryo. So this is maybe a little bit too excessive for a developer who might not even have access to a Kubernetes cluster and maybe not even kind. So the CNI repo comes with uh, a tool which is the Swiss Army knife, which is basically getting um, your binary and getting your uh, configuration that I spoke before which is basically a JSON file, which all the tooling from there, it will create a network name and space, and then you will be able just to test that out. We got a demo about that, so I'll be showing that to you later. And in fact, if you just want to create a CNI, pl a CNI plugin, check out CNI tool and make it work using the network name spaces, because you'll definitely get an awful lot more of information rather than just, you know, a crash loop on the pod, or yes, a sandbox, could, a sandbox couldn't get created and so forth. So again, and as we were commenting before, one of the things that these uh, CNI plugins don't usually have, especially the, the reference ones, are, is login. A login boot just makes your life so much easier, and even the user or the ad administration, because they would know how to debug the thing and what's going on. So let's get you started with some demo. So is the font big enough or do I make it bigger? Let's make it a little bit bigger. So we'll start by creating just a can cluster. Uh, no rocket science, just a quick uh, Kubernetes over Docker demo. So let's get kick in. Um, by the way, we had to do some modifications because of the Wi-Fi from the beginning. So we wanted this to be real life. Sorry in advance, guys, we couldn't make it. Um, we are going to be starting, um, by the way, this uh, kind of cluster has no CNI plugin, so at the beginning the node would be in the node radio stage. So let's get a primary CNI plugin, which is going to be Cilium. Uh, let's build the image from here. We got it. And then let's load the image into kind. Okay, there we go. Um, we are going to be also using uh, multi CNI as a way to have several CNI plugins working within the same pod and have several interfaces on the same pod. So there we go, running. So, okay. How Moldos works? How do I add a secondary network interfa interface or a secondary network? So you, you need to use a, a network CRD, which is called a network that's been definition, which has this way. If you see, I'm also injecting the config from the CNI plugin. We are going to be using the plugin that we spoke before that we developed for this, uh, for this conference, the KipCon CNI. And again, this is a, a binary which is going to be executed later on. Now let's create a pod. How do I hook up uh, this secondary network in the pod? You're going to be using an annotation that you see it has the same name from the configuration that we used before. So that would create the secondary network interface. So far, this is OK. So now we got a pod with two NICs running. But let's, what happens if you mess up? Let's assume you create a secondary network with a non-valid configuration. How would you debug this? OK, here we are going to create yet another network attachment definition, which is going to be non valid because this is just not there. And if we get to see, the pods, OK, let's see. There we go. Those are the annotations filled from the first pod. 
This is running, it's okay. If you can see, it has you know, two different interfaces as well, from the Silicon CNI and the other one from the KubeCon CNI, and that's okay. But what happens with the other one? The other one, it says it seems to be okay, but it's container creating and it's gonna be there forever until it gets to a crash loop. Because as we were commenting and in earlier slides, one of the most common things and issues when creating one of these is that the CNI plugin is just not there on the binary. So we are using Cilium, which is there, of course it works, and then we are using the Kipcon CNI, which exists, and the other one, which doesn't. So how could we, you know, debug this out? So if we go to the Kubelot logs, you'll see that it's just trying to create a pod sandbox and it's trying to hook up into the binary, but it's just not there. So getting back to the CNI plugin path, and let's assume that we are using the default path, you could get to see that most of the plugins are there. You know, we got Silicon CNI, we got the Kipcon CNI, but we don't have the other one that we are referencing. So this, of course, would always fail. I also wanted to speak a little bit about, okay, how would I test this? So Kipcon CNI, if we are on the CNI plugin path, you could always just go ahead and, you know, call the plugin. Those are all binaries. And if you are on each node, you can just, you know, execute them. If you see the, this Kipcon CNI, it's just kicking out like today's date, so it's, it does nothing fancy. But I think it's a great example on, on how to handle this on. So feel free to check that on GitHub. And I also spoke about CNI tool. So how would I check locally and without having to deal with any cluster uh, my CNI plugin and the configuration? So for instance, this is a sample configuration that I took up for the uh, egress router CNI, which is also available on GitHub. So basically it, it's meant to be expecting a few IP addresses and a few ports. If you see there, uh, I'll say that the address is just called KubeCon and the destination is called Beam Fuber. So this won't ever work. So what happens? Let's just give it a try to test this with a CNI, CNI tool. So I got this script, which is just basically, first I do create a network time space, then I do call CNI plugin. If you check there, I'm just uh, asking for it to do a CNI add command using the egress router binary. So egress router binary is again, the name and the type for that CNI plugin that we are testing. So let's run it. Here, this is one of the uh, plugins that has logins. Uh, so so uh, again, the log word login is enabled. So this is again, an awesome thing because you will be able to see what's going on. So it's, we are calling add, we are trying to set a gateway, which of course doesn't work, but you can see some stuff. This doesn't happen for any of the reference plugins. And as Doug was commenting before, it's an as of now, and we hope that this is gonna be, you know, being improved by the CNI 2.0 specification. Every CNI plugin needs to go and implement their own with login. So, where about CNI, they do login. Multi CNI, they do login, but most of them don't. Let's try to do the same with uh, the KubeCon CNI that we just got here. Again, as I was commenting before, you just need to put uh, in the type and the name and the CNI version. So nothing much more. So that would be the scale of the first CNI plugin you're gonna be playing with. Afterwards, you could just go and add any fields that you would be happy to. This is just the same script adapted to the other CNI plugin. And what's going on? There you go. It gives you a valid output. So should it has failed, we wouldn't have any way of knowing that because there is no login. So that's why I do really encourage you to please, 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 when developing CNN plugins, please implement login. Okay, so thank you for attending the demo. Cool, thanks, Daniel, really appreciate it. All right, so to briefly try to wrap this all together and talk about how we'd like to see CNI 2.0 improve, um, based on our experience with um, debugging CNI 2.0. One of the main things I'm excited about in CNI 2.0 is the prospect of having uh, the plugins themselves 
running in pods. So since we have these plugins running as binaries on disk, it's kind of a non sequitur for how you interact with your cluster as an administrator. So that's something I'd really like to see. Um, we're not a huge fan of having the configurations in JSON. Um, it's also not exactly the same as what we're used to with our um, YAML type of specifications that we're working with. Um, additionally, devices are a difficulty, so we're trying to figure out if there's a kind of a better, more collapsed way to uh, work with devices. And uh, uh, lastly is to have something that better handles uh, network lifecycle during a container's runtime. So when we mention the commands, we've got CNI add, delete, Etc. Those happen in discrete moments when your pod is created, when your pod is deleted. But what if something happens between those two detent points? Uh, we'd like to see something that's a little bit richer uh, in that sense. Uh, and just briefly, um, something that is kind of an idea in terms of a design paradigm is the idea of a thin plugin and a thick plugin. A thin CNI plugin is just the binary on disk uh, that runs as a one shot. It starts, it does its work, and it exits. Um, you could have a richer design that we call a thick plugin. And the idea is you replace that thin plugin that runs on disk with what we call a CNI shim. That shim takes that standard in, the environment variables, and it packages that up and sends it to a, a process that's usually running in a, in a pod as a long running process. That's where we call it a thick plugin. And it takes that information, does the work that it needs to do, and then sends uh, the results back to the shim and the shim exits. As you can see by this diagram, it's, there's a number of moving parts happening here. And in CNI 2.0, we're hopeful that we can standardize all of that communication and have, uh, and have your plugins running kind of natively as a thick plugin. And then in this sense, instead of all of that work that Daniel had to do in order to figure out is my pod running and not running, how did I get the logs from the kubelet? What you can just do is more like a cube cuddle get logs and get your logs um, out of the pod. Um, so yeah, thank you. If you have uh, interest in any of this um, and in CNI 2.0 as well, um, there's a working group that I work with that we would love to have you join with any questions, comments, ideas, uh, contributions, et cetera, um, as well as the CNI maintainers, I'm sure um, would be happy to hear from you. There's a number of uh, issues in the GitHub issues that are tagged as a CNI 2.0 if you're interested in that as well. Um, and we yeah. have the contents available. Yeah, um, that's the content and also for sort of if you want to talk with us, feel free to ping us on Kubernetes as like. So yeah, thank you. Any questions, anyone? Uh, I have a question like this idea of CNI uh, plugin in pods, but do you have an idea how to resolve the issue of eggs and uh, chicken? Like, how you create the pod without CNI plugin, yeah? So, so what would be first, yeah? Uh, that's a great question. And I think that you would probably have to have a kind of special class of pod. It might look more like a static pod itself. 
Um, that would be that would be my guess, but that's a great question. Um, another thing I'm thinking about uh, um, in a similar sense is uh, in CNI 2.0, if you have these plugins running in pods, they're going to need host uh, access as well. And I think that that's going to be something tricky to be able to expose that host access to the pods. And then it's also going to have security implications. So um, I think that there's uh, a number of interesting challenges there. Thank you. Yeah, totally. I think it's going to be a little bit like, you know, with the Kubernetes API. So you would need a static pod. And also probably you need to, you know, get either capabilities for accessing network and so forth, or just, you know, privileged access. Hey, one question. I find a little odd that in order to have multiple CNIs, I have to deploy a multi so whatever. Yeah. Is any work in progress to be able to natively support multiple CNIs without having to resort to multi sources, like embedding multi in power? I'll let Doug reply because he's a Multus maintainer, so go ahead. Uh, yeah, Francisco, that's a, a great question. Um, so this is something that we've, um, as Network Plumbing Working Group, have been uh, looking at over a number of years. Um, I think that um, SIG Network is becoming um, increasingly more interested in the idea of having this natively in tree in Kubernetes. Um, when we first started the effort for Multus CNI, we um, the it's a long it's a long story, but the short version is it was going to create sweeping changes across the code base of Kubernetes, and the maintainers weren't super excited. But I think that over time, um, more people have seen the value in being able to have multi-homed pods. Um, so. Uh, we are continuing to drive in that direction, and I think that everyone who's a member of the Network Plumbing Working Group would like to see that happen. So stay tuned, because uh, it's certainly part of the discussion. Thank you. Yeah, also one of the things that is being discussed about lately is that, you know, so far you need to do an, add a network attachment definition. So it's a work in progress, at least an idea to have a direct a network primitive within, you know, Kubernetes directly without having to do all, you know, this plumbing under the hood. Uh, thank you for the talk. I really enjoyed it. Um, slightly off-topic question. Um, what software did you use to make the demo? I thought that was great. Yeah, it's called Demo Magic. So basically, you could do everything. I mean, it's, it's on GitHub. Just check for it, GitHub Demo Magic. And I think it's a kind of cool thing to do because you could basically mock the things up when network is not working. Thank you. Hi, one follow-up question uh, related to Multus. Um, can you comment on Intel DBDK support, so data plane development kit, where we would need additional uh, network interfaces? Uh, sure, so the, the, um, the best uh, context that I have for the use of DPDK with secondary interfaces has usually been relative to the use of SROV um, devices. And so, and additionally, um, it is one of the considerations of the specification that we have for uh, secondary networks was to allow you to have kind of a blank slate, if you will, because if you're using DPDK, you're going to bring along your own um, IP stack, et cetera. So it's definitely possible. And I believe that using the um, SROV network operator, um, which is one of the projects as part of the Network Plumbing Working Group, um, there is DPDK support for SROV devices as um, secondary networks. Does, does that help? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. There's also another option, which is, let's say you got your own plugin. You got to have any plugin for that, for instance, would attach your NIC, secondary NIC to OBS DPDK. Then you're getting that for free, or you could also have a secondary plugin that would, you know, attach a Macmillan interface, and then you can, you know, get the SRV pass through and so forth. So, I mean, it kind of depends on what you want. Uh, I think that we have run out of time, but we would. Um... Yeah, we're happy to answer questions. We'll be along for a while. So, thank you. Thank you all for attending today, and see you around. <laughs>